there's also other versions. The independent sample t-test, for example. The independent sample t-test is the t-test that will compare two groups against one another. Now, these groups have to be independent. That is not related to one another, right? So we can only compare two groups at a, at a time, and these groups must be independent groups. You can imagine comparing a random sample of men versus some random sample of women, comparing those who are minority versus a majority in some region of the world, um, comparing those who are major in sight versus those who are not. Again, anytime the groups are independent. So this is going to take a slightly different version because now our estimate is in fact the difference between means. So that means that the sampling distribution is the sampling distribution of the difference between means, not just the sampling distribution of the mean. Now, under the null hypothesis, this term here, the difference between the population averages, under the null hypothesis, we're going to say what? Well, the null is going to say that mu1 equals mu2, which is the same thing as saying that mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. Right, so under the null hypothesis, this term disappears. So we don't even include this. Uh, I wanted to put it just so that you see that it is officially part of the math, but it's not necessary. Right, the alternate hypothesis is that these groups are not equal, right? And you can have a directional one that says how they differ specifically, right? But under the null, it's going to be zero. So our test is going to simply result to be the difference between our two sample means, right? That's the only term we're going to need over the standard error for this mean difference. So for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to get the pooled variance and we're going to do N1 and N2 for this pooled variance term. We're going to put that all together. And the pooled variance can be obtained really easily by recombining the sum of squares for your samples and the degrees of freedom for your samples. So this is going to get us the pooled variance, right? You've now combined or pooled the variance terms for these two groups. And so we'll look a little more at this math, like I said, coming up. But this is the case where you would want to compare, for example, two classrooms, one teacher's group of students versus another teacher's group of students. So you would now have two independent samples. The well, last type of t-test we'll talk about is the related sample t-test. The related sample t-test is where you're comparing groups that are related. A, a very common manifestation of this test is a test where you look at people versus themselves. So the idea being something like are students' SAT scores higher at the end of the class than they are at the beginning? Now note, in this case, you are measuring the same people on two occasions. So the data cannot be independent. So if your data is not independent, you have to account for the relatedness. The simplest way to do this is to just get different scores. So what we would do is we would get all of the pre-scores for the class, all of the post scores for the class, and we're just going to take all those scores. So some students first score, some students second score, so person one time one, person one time two, right? And you're going to get the difference between those. So you're going to just subtract across, and that's going to give you the D score for this person, which is the difference. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use a bunch of these different scores for however many people we measure. And these different scores are going to be used then for us to get an uh, average difference and a standard deviation for the differences, right? So if the standard deviation is for the differences, the standard error is going to be for the average difference. So the standard error is going to be the average difference. That's a D. So Really, this simplifies to be a very easy test where all you're going to do is have the average difference because, again, under the null hypothesis, the population value is going to be zero, that there was no difference. The students were the same at the beginning and at the end. And then you're going to have what 
you're going to have the standard deviation of the difference scores divided by the square root of n, which is the number of what? The number of different scores. Because again, we're only using the difference scores. We are not using x1 and x2. So we don't use these and these. So don't count them twice. Every one person gives you one different score. That's all you want to use. Okay. So we want to be clear about what goes into our math. But this is basically a special case of a one sample test where all you're using are the difference scores. Now, sometimes we use this for matched samples cases. And in matched samples, you are comparing two people with related data, either intentionally or because that's how they exist. For example, spouses or siblings. If you wanted to see whether or not husbands or wives in a married couple were more satisfied with their marriage, you could do a related sample t-test. You get the satisfaction for a husband or wife. You get the difference between those. And you could see whether or not there was a significant difference in satisfaction levels. Now, if you just wanted to see whether men who are married and women who are married are more satisfied, you could do that as an independent sample test so long as you're not actually getting husbands and wives as couples. Because obviously, the satisfaction of a husband or wife is going to be related to the satisfaction of their spouse. So this is one of those things where we've got to pay attention to whether or not the data will be related. But in most cases where you have two separate groups, you're doing an independent sample test. And if you have the same people, you're doing a related sample, specifically a repeated measures, right? So the match subjects, slightly different. You're going to have things like spouses or siblings. So you do have two people for every different score. 